What's up guys, my name is Solus Baby, and today I want to take some time and look at what we have learned so far from all the Anthem updates that we have gotten from EA and Bioware themselves. I'm gonna do my best not to talk about speculation, even though it's probably coming from a few reputable sources. If EA or Bioware hasn't said that it will be in the game, it may not be there. Everything that these guys got flown out to play for Anthem is just early access stuff, and that is subject to change, so I'll be ignoring that. Also, there's a good amount of speculation that EA is already ruining Anthem, and that this game is just going to flop. In my opinion, it's way too early for that type of talk, since we don't know how this game feels up against its heavy competition. But, moving on. So, Anthem, if any of you don't know, is going to be a live service, and the developers have stated that all the expansions that will be coming out for this game are going to be free due to the inclusion of microtransactions for cosmetics. Bioware is taking advantage of it being a live service by making the world as ever-changing as possible, even going so far to state that it will be different for every time you enter free play or a legendary contract. They've even come out with a roadmap showcasing the events that will be dropping and in what sequence, even though we haven't had its initial launch yet. This is a good thing to see as it shows commitment from both the developer and the publisher to keep the game being fresh and updated for the foreseeable future. The live service quality of this game seems to act similar to a subscription-based game setup, with the added benefit of it being completely free, or at least that's the story they're sticking to right now, and I hope they're able to pull it off. This also gives Bioware the freedom to launch content whenever they want, aka whenever it's ready to be released, as well as change world events and the like to keep you in a state of not knowing every time you boot the game up. Which, if it works, will be a fantastic way to stay relevant for them. It's also extremely ambitious on their part, and it means they'll have to put in a lot of work. But enough backstory on the game, and let's look at what we get at launch. First, you'll have to level up your pilot. This has nothing to do with each specific javelin, and this is really leveling up your character. You'll be able to go to level 30, which is the cap. That's when the end game starts, and you'll begin specking your javelins to be the most overpowered they can possibly be, with the inclusion of gear, weapons, and different abilities. And you'll do this by gradually climbing the ladder of difficulty that Anthem has to offer, all the way from easy up to Grandmaster 3, which is where the best gear in the game is going to come from. As you increase the difficulty, the rewards you get from activities will also increase, but with the massive jump in loot, you also get a substantial amount of hardship. The enemies will have a lot more health the further you go, and the high tier enemies of this faction will spawn. Apparently the enemies will also have a more difficult AI to fight against, as well as deploying different movesets and tactics. It hasn't been pinpointed as to whether this only applies to mobs or if it applies to bosses as well, but that seems pretty decent to me since I personally was very worried that the enemies would just become massive bullet sponges, and that gets really boring when you're doing the same missions over and over again. Some of the highest level activities you're going to be able to do are called Strongholds which at lower difficulties take 30 to 40 minutes, while as higher difficulties you're going to be able to take about 2 to 3 hours to do them. Now, this doesn't seem like very much content, but Bioware has committed to keep your grinding fresh by consistently adding world events to keep you busy outside of these activities. I talked about the concept of raids a lot in my last video about Anthem, but I want to briefly state what the developer has said about them again now because I think it's relevant to this conversation. The problem with Raid is that it has a connotation. It requires more people, or has five bosses in a circle. That's why I'm using the word aspiration content. In other games, a Raid is that, and while I think that it is important to a game like ours, we have an idea which is different but ticks the needs of why a Raid is important. It's the thing you'll schedule with your buddies, will be hard, or requires tons and tons of coordination, and then there will be ways to show it off for you if you're good at that or not. So they have their own ideas for what a raid should be, and that's all we know about them so far. Along with the three strongholds, two of which are available at launch, you'll have legendary contracts, which according to them, will be completely different every time you do them. They even go so far to say that you'll almost never do the same thing twice as they generate randomly. This is a very bold claim. In doing these contracts, you gain higher level gear to level up your javelins. You'll also have daily, weekly, and monthly challenges, which will net you the rare materials that you will need to craft high-level gear from Blueprints, which is Anthem's way of being able to guarantee you a drop so you don't have to rely on RNG to make your character the best that it can be. Obviously, these will take a lot of work, but it completely negates you having to wait for a specific skill or weapon to drop for you in the wild. There's only one layer of RNG here instead of the multitude that you'll have out in the world. 
Free play will be much more jam-packed in the full release, as they have stated, due to the feedback from players that it really felt empty. On top of that, they'll be spawning new events there. The most prominent and dangerous will be the Cataclysms. These will cause physical changes to the world like weather and mobs to fight, as well as Mysterious to solve, which will net you rewards that Bioware says, quote, they will tell us about soon. These are all the events that we will be getting on the roadmap, which you saw earlier in this video, each of the updates bringing things like leaderboards and quality of life updates and missions. It seems like there will be quite a bit to do on paper, but it will be interesting to see how it all goes over in the long term. I'm excited to see what they can do as a development team and how well it will hold its player base against industry titans like Destiny, Division 2, and the like, launching slightly after it. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, leave me a comment about how you feel about everything we're getting at launch, like this video, it helps me out a lot, subscribe to my channel for a multitude of different contents. With that guys, I'll see you in the next video, have a good one.